in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty angel snout number seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ra. Okay. On this busy, let us get busy. I would like to speak with us who are part of black liberation, black power, black nationalism, black conscience, those of us who have become awakened to a certain knowledge of ourselves and understand that our people are in a horrific condition. And since we are awakened it is our responsibility, it is our duty to help awaken and make the masses become enlightened like we have become enlightened so that we can progress as a people. So in doing this, it begins with the word. So I have a word that I offer to my people so that we can become awakened and go on to do things better than trying to survive in a ghetto, better than being an alcoholic or a drunk, which that's the same, right? <laughs> alcoholic and a drunk. Dope fiends, prostitutes, all those things that degrade and are detrimental to us. In fact, I think, I think, in, well, actually, I know that all of us who are attempting this great feat of awakening this sleeping lion that's dead in the earth. That's what we want to do. Raise our people from this dead level. But I want to let you know something. That all the views that you get, some of you are not like me. I only get 50 views a, a video. <laughs> but some of y'all, you get hundreds and thousands of views. And that's a wonderful thing. But I want to let you know something. All the views that you're getting, don't think that it's black folks that's watching you. Everybody is watching this little fella who calls himself a nigga, whose women embrace the word hoe and bitch. The world is watching these little nothing that don't see something in themselves. All the views that you're getting here on YouTube and everywhere you go, black man and woman, you think you are trying to attract other black people, but everybody, especially white people, Caucasian people, are keeping an eye on your channel, keeping an eye on my channel. I say this because I received a phone call, of which I already knew, but this was my first phone call from a Caucasian person telling me and advising me what I should and should not do. <laughs> I'm like, the purpose of the reality is temple. My number one priority is the upliftment and the awakening and the betterment of those who are the descendants of slaves in America. But here's a white woman. I would expect black folks, male or female, child or whatever, will give me a call and ask me a little of this or tell me this or that. But here's a white lady trying to tell me that she just saw my video and she wanted to give me some advice how I should think, how I should 
move in what direction to go so this tells me of which verifies that we are being watched by many people so the question arises to me and it should to you why is the white man or why are white people interested in what black folks are saying what black folks are attempting or want to do see you don't understand your importance you don't understand how important you are in the scheme of things we view ourselves as niggas and our women will claim that they are hoes and bitches in fact many of the males call them hoes and bitches and we view ourselves in such a low low manner but there are those that know at this time that we are on a low uh, mentality we have a low mentality but they understand our potential and they understand our real influence not only in America but our influence in the world because even though we are a dead people our influence is felt all around the planet so right now others control this influence others control this power the fear from this white woman the fear from many people around the earth now some don't mind they want to see us uplifted they want us to do better but the majority have a fear because once you begin to see your own importance once you begin to understand the power that you have black man and woman your rise means the beginning of the end of the world that they're used to our upliftment hey, our upliftment means the end of the world that you know and many don't want to see that so we fight one another we kill one another we hate one another we don't have no respect for another black man and woman and as long as we are like that those of whom world is built on lies and deceit greed lust envy rape and robbery as long as we are allowing ourselves to become the state victim in this system of voluntary slavery because we're not slaves physically anymore it's even worse we have become slaves mentally so they keep an eye on you and they want to keep an eye on me they want to know where you're at and what they can do to try to change your direction from going up because if you go up something must go down because in science they say that two objects can't occupy the same space so if somebody going up black man uh, somebody gotta go down and in this world of opposites if the black man and woman of America those who are the descendants of slaves who have been known to be trash inferiors clowns savages modern day savages but if these savages if these clowns are being made or now being formed to go up then somebody gotta go down so who is the man on top who is the man up for already the race of the lady that gave me a call trying to give me advice on what I should and should not do so there is concern 
Because if we rot, then somebody got to fall. And since that person is already up, they got to go down. And whether they like it or not, their world, regardless if we rise or not, their world is falling and has been falling. Now, the fall is coming at a greater speed. And this is the fear. So, if they are beginning to fall, and if you know how it is when you're beginning to fall, and you have someone that's already stood up or they're rising, then you want to snatch on and hold on to the one that's rising up. That's why they have an interest in you, black man. That's why they have an interest in us. Because if they can't be in power, then they want to hold on and put into you and me their mindset. So they can continue to live. So even though physically they may not be on the top like they used to, but if we, if they can grab onto us and get us to embrace their ideas of what life is supposed to be, what success is supposed to be, what revolution is supposed to be, their concept of what being a conqueror is supposed to be. Then we rise. But in fact, they rise also because physically they may not be there. But their mentality is there. So they want to know how you think, black man or woman. Because if you carry their mindset, then perhaps they can save the world that they have built over these few thousand years, maybe they can save it and it can last just a little longer hiding behind dark skin. <laughs> Do you understand? The devil, the evil, is trying to use a Trojan, the Trojan horse method. Y'all remember the story of the Trojan horse? I think this was a story in Greek mythology where these persons was trying to get behind enemy lines and they gave the gift of a big horse and, the, and their enemies accepted this big horse. They did not know that the horse was hollow in the inside they thought it was a solid piece of wood and the enemy went inside the horse, got past the enemy line and once they got inside they destroyed these people from within because they willingly through the Trojan horse willingly let their enemy through their defenses inside. So this is what is happening today, brothers and sisters. You have a world that's falling, that's coming to an end, whether they like it or not, they're holding on to their life. And so they are seeing and they think and they know that you and I, we are rising slowly but surely. So they want to find out what's going on in your mind. So they can grab on to you. So any dark person that they can influence. See, they know that dark person has an opportunity and a chance. They can use them as the Trojan horse. Get into that mind. Hopefully, that dark person can go behind the line and turn that which is supposed to be black liberation, black power, black nationalism, supposed to be you returning to yourself they wish to make it a real Oreo cookie, make you the real dark version of who they are. Hold on a minute, we're gonna go to uh, part two. Hold on, cause that's not my... <laughs> so, 
there's a fear of the mindset of black people since the dark is now slowly rising back to the top. And there's a fear among Caucasian people, not only in America, but around the world, who understand and, and who know there's a fear. And there is a feeling of being upset because everything that they knew will now become part of former things. And their fear is like they hope that, uh, how can I explain this? The fear is that once black people come into power, or as they rise, there's a fear that we would do to them what they have done to us. And I want to say something to Caucasian people who have this fear. If the black man and woman, those of us who are the descendants of slaves, if it is destined for us to come up out of this mud, this muck, and this mire, out of this bad condition to rise into a position of power, we, you should not have a fear. Because the only reason of why you are going down is because, and see, the thing about it, you don't have to go down. You can stay up, and it's not about color, it's about a mindset. If the powers that be, the Caucasian people, the powers that be, if they decide, and see the problem is they're not going to, to decide, because if they wanted to, they would have changed long time ago. But they like, they built a world based on lies and deceit, rape, robbery, theft, murder, enslavement, and became wealthy, and they liked the idea of being master over others, better than others. You hear Caucasian people all the time talking about, America is so great this, and the Europeans do this, and that attitude, and making other people inferior to you has put you in a position where now it is time for your demise because you are not fair you don't share with nobody you have the mind of a of a child <clears throat> excuse me you're childish greedy selfish and now that which brought us into existence, the creation that gave the human being the greatest of intelligence. Now, time dictates that these human beings with childlike mentalities be taken down because that childlike mentality is stopping all of humanity from progress. You think that your car and the space shuttle and all these other little things that you have been doing is great. When actually you should be more advanced than what you are. You don't believe that, do you? You should be way more advanced. And your scientists. But see, you cannot advance when you have a certain group of people that dominate opportunity they they hinder human progress because humanity is everywhere all colors all creed every it's every and so the answer to your question could be coming from out the womb of a woman and she could be living in Africa that that be that bird a child 
with the information to bring you the solutions to whatever. But that's not good enough. Because, see, I'm superior. All the answers to all problems and solutions are only supposed to come from white people. So you have actually hindered human evolution, hinder human progress. And if the black man and woman, this, these who are the sinners of slaves and black people around the earth, once you rise, and if you and if you have the attitude of the Caucasian, then the only thing gonna happen is the same thing that happened to them, it'll happen to you. You'll do no better. In fact, you had a different attitude back in the day. It was not race related, but you had a childish attitude when the black man and woman, the dark people, used to be on top. Now you have a second chance and you can't be like what you was back in the day that caused you to fall. You can't be like Caucasian people who are in rulership now that's falling. You have to be different. Those ideas, those things were not fair. They were unequal. They were not just. And so those things, when you deny life, justice, fair, oppor fairness, opportunity, the ability to express oneself and be who they are, when you, when you hinder the womb of women and cause them to abort their children, the child that could be born to bring you closer to the next step into understanding the universe then that's why we are here where we are today a frustrated humanity a humanity that is stunted in its evolutionary development mentally and in religion we say that it is hindered and stunted spiritually do you understand what I'm trying to tell us. There's no need to fear Caucasian people. There's no need to fear Native American people. There's no need to fear. You should embrace this time because the black man and woman, the dark people, it's not even about color. But it's the changing of the guard where one person, one people was supposed to do this and they fail. So now you're giving the duty and the responsibility to somebody who had it before and now they get a second chance. This new world is not going to be based on racial superiority. This new world is not going to be based in gender superiority. It's going to be based in what all of us cry and yearn for. True freedom, true justice, true equality for all humanity. Respect, bring respect back and love back to this planet Earth. And love all life, the deer, the antelope, the giraffe, the elephant. Bring this Earth into peace, a peace that we have never experienced only talk about because the peace that we claim that we have is a controlled peace in fact it is really violence except it's controlled because violence can break out at any time but when you're at peace you never have to worry about violence how much violence do you see in a graveyard in the cemetery there is none unless somebody living come by because those who are dead or at peace. You don't have to worry about this person in this grave bothering the person next to them. They are at peace. But you can experience that peace while you live if you get your mind right. So the people that's in power, their mind is not right. They're not going to get right. So they must fall and another who has been getting 
and been put in a position to get their mind right, now they must rise to the top. You should not fear. You should be happy that there's a changing of the guard. You should be tired of suffering. You should be tired of being oppressed. You should be tired of terrorism. You should be tired of violence and misery and suffering. You should be ready to bring unto the earth the heaven and the hereafter that's spoken about in both Bible and Quran. You don't have to wait till you're dead to rest in peace. You can, you can rest in peace right here as you live. <laughs> and it is coming. It is coming. Because if it don't come, then all humanity, you don't have to worry about it. You're going to get a different kind of resting in peace. You're going to go extinct. Your destruction is right around the corner. And since you cannot do good on top of the ground, perhaps you can do better under the ground. Your choice. These people who you call clowns and savages and monkeys and apes and whatever you want to call us. These are the ones of whom the creation, y'all say God or whatever. This is the time for these who have been enslaved, those who have been made dead. Now they are to rise up from their graves and take their proper spot, their proper position in this life and it's happening whether you like it or not that's why so many Caucasian people who are a little learned who understand they know but you should not fear you should want the changing of the guard so that the peace that you claim that you want can come into existence it is, a, it is for the betterment of humanity regardless to your color, regardless to where on earth you are. This is a joyous time. But it, it does not bring joy to the wicked who like to be on top. I'm better and greater. So your time is over. And they will fight you to the very end because they don't want this change. The Bible talks about this war of Armageddon. You don't have to wait for the war of Armageddon. You're living in it right now. It's the changing of the guard. It's good versus evil once and for all. The ultimate battle. It's not really about race. It's about right versus wrong. The evil versus the wicked. And if you're Caucasian and you're good, you're going to survive. But if you're Caucasian and you want to hold on to this, to that which made this, this uh, situation, which created all of this, you're on your way out. It's over. That world is over. White supremacy is about to come to an end. Gender, gender superiority, that is about to come to an end. This video is about to come to an end and I didn't even get a chance to get into my topic. I'll go ahead and begin what I really originally wanted to say in part three. Okay. Uh, I wish I could record this video so I wouldn't have these little breaks so I can keep the momentum going. But this is YouTube and we're going to do the best that we can with this particular tool. I hope that I'm not boring you. Uh, just hold on a minute and uh, for part three and I'm going to bring this to conclusion might take another two videos but if it's if I'm worthy you will stick with me hold on y'all hold on going to part what I forgot how to count part three <laughs> Psalm 
So in a nutshell, what we have here, and the fear is the changing of the guard. No more, no less. It's just like if you were at a job, you had one boss, and those who benefit from that boss, even though that boss was dirty and low down, if you benefit from that boss, it's cool. Even though he's dirty and low down, since you benefit, then that's all right. But those of whom this low, dirty person is oppressing, they don't like it. So here comes another person willing to give justice to all. But see, the problem happens, those who were benefiting from the old boss, because they did benefit, they found themselves superior over the other ones because this low down dirty boss, they was cool. You know, we I'm I'm cool with the dirty low down boss. So there's a fear about the new boss, especially if the new boss want to give equality and fairness to everybody. Everybody, we think everybody want, to, want heaven. We think everybody want good. And that's not true. Because some people benefit. Listen. Some people benefit from evil. They benefit from you being a prostitute. They benefit from you being a whoremonger and a fornicator and a doctor. They benefit from you having babies out of wedlock. They benefit from you stealing. They benefit from you in your bad condition. So why do they, why would they want to change anything? They don't want you to be good. And as long as you're in a bad condition, they can always look down on you. <laughs> look at those savage people. <laughs> So change can mean good for some and it could be bad for others, especially when the others don't want change to include everybody. Because if I am the same as you, we are the same, if we are truly equal, then I mean, what is that? There's nothing that you can say. How can you be better? There are those who like to, they want to be better. And that's the problem that we have in the changing of this guard. Because the changing of the guard means the end of I'm better. Because you're not. There's plenty of earth. There's plenty of universe for everybody. The end of a certain group of people hogging everything. Greedy, selfish. That time is coming to an end. It's not needed. Because that type of childish attitude is stopping the flow, stopping the progress of the human being. All right, not going to repeat myself. Going on, you got it. You got exactly what I'm, you know where I'm coming from. I'm going to, this might take two videos. I'm, I don't want to take a lot of your time. But this is what I really originally wanted to put to uh, to post. <laughs> okay. There's a little faceless fella. These faceless people, I should not respond, but there might be somebody who won't be faceless. So I'm gonna just just uh respond to these wacky comments. Some faceless guy, I'm not even gonna mention the guy cause I don't, I don't wanna give them, him, her, or whatever the hell it is, it's faceless. I would guess it's a he, who knows? Or, we don't know what the thing is. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, okay? But you got a lot of nerve. Now, this faceless person comes to me now, 
it seems as though they're trying to tell me they are Caucasian. I'm a white guy. So they're going to come to me and tell and inform me that they are a supporter of Brother t -Mont, Brother Derek Grace. I have been, I have been friends with t -Mont for years. We have tea and puppets together. <laughs> That's the way he talked. And I will support you because I support t -Mont and because t -Mont supports you, even though I don't agree with much of what you say, I will support you because of t -Mont. Look, fella, if that's what you are, faceless coward, I don't need your support. I don't want your support. I didn't ask for your support. If you are friends, long-time friends with t -Mont, that's your business. It has nothing to do with me. I never asked you for your support. Don't bring that garbage to me. You can take your face as that and how and how are you supposed to support me anyway? What you gonna do for me? Tell my sis you support T-Mont, T-Mont support me. What are you gonna do for me? You need to get the hell out of here with that card. So I had to put this bum in check. I'm not your damn slave. I don't need no friends with no white guy. Well, if you're not friends to a white guy, you be considered racist or whatever. I don't give a damn about stuff like that. I'm here for black folks, the descendant of slaves. If there are Caucasian people who understand my position, then that's good. I will embrace that. But if you don't, roll out. I don't give a damn about what you're talking about. I, I support you, cousin. And why would you support me simply because of t -Mont? You can't think for yourself, so everything that you, 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 you got to get t -Mont's approval on how you think, who you support and who you don't. Get the hell out of here, dude. You just childish ass up. Get roll out. But I want to deal with some of the corny comments that he left me. He said that uh, the black people are ignorant if they are accepting my viewpoint. <laughs> Sir, that could be true. Ignorant only means lack of knowledge. I don't know. But see, that's the purpose of coming to the Reality's Temple so that we can come together so that we don't stay ignorant that we begin to learn and gain knowledge. Because I don't offer a viewpoint. I tell it exactly like it is. You might not like it. But I bring us our reality. And what we're dealing with. So I'm bringing my people their reality. And once they begin to accept their reality. They don't need my viewpoint. And many of them way before my existence understand their reality. They don't need my viewpoint. And once they begin to understand their reality, then they begin to know and are no longer ignorant. See, you want us to, see, you really want us to be ignorant because you want us to believe that things have changed. Well, you're not a slave no more. Physically, we're not slaves. But mentally and in this society, the same old master-slave relationship continues. Because if it didn't, white supremacy could not exist. And many Caucasian people themselves would tell you White racism, white supremacy still exists. And if it exists, a majority, not a minority, a majority of people are keeping it alive. And it's not people that got 
that have hoods over their faces. They are the ones like you. Am I pointing right? There you go. Like you. Who smile in black folks' face. And stab us in the back. Because see, there are direct races like your Ku Klux Klan, Nazi Party. Then you have indirect races, undercover, covert races, probably like you. And you probably don't even know you racist. See, we've been living, we have lived under white supremacy for over 400 years. Black people have been taught that they are inferior. And we continue to hold on to a slave-like mentality. You, on the other hand, as a Caucasian person, you have been conditioned to believe you are superior and you are the master over the dark people. You say, I I don't think that way. The, the, you verify when you come to me and tell me that you're a supporter of me because of some other man and you tell me that, that our people, my people are ignorant for listening to me. Because see, in your mind, these are still slaves. And whatever come out of your mouth is right. You ain't never wrong. And see, that's how it is in a master-slave relationship. You will call us ignorant. Out of our name. Like you know so much. Because you the master. I know what's good for you. Just like your pet. Your pet don't have any, no choice of the dog food that you buy. Your pet, your slave, don't have a choice in what the clothes that it wears, what it can and cannot do. That's the attitude that you have. So here you come to me, talking your nonsense, but you don't understand, I'm not your slave. You come to me, you talk to me like a man. I'm your equal, but you don't view black folks as that. You embrace and you accept black folks that they, their mindset is like that of a slave. And they view you as a friend. Instead of being part of those who oppress them and you, they have to force you to show that you are friend. Because you come from a people who have done nothing but evil and dirt and terrorized us for over 300 years. Your attitude, you gonna call somebody ignorant. That just shows a sign of what you really are. Ignorant because I don't won't listen to the garbage that you say. Because you supposed to be my master. Everything that you said is right. <laughs> you got me messed up. You got me messed up, buddy. <laughs> Times are changing. You ain't massa no more. The black man and woman in America are on their way up. Because we, are, have, we have been an oppressed people. The female, the woman, is on her way up. Because she's been an oppressed gender. Whether the men like it or not. See, y'all like the good old days. Male domination. Especially white male domination. Your day in the sun is over because you have you have proven yourself an incompetent, unjust, evil and wicked ruler. That's why your day is over. That's why the creation is moving you out. And putting to who gonna take your place is those who you despise and who you loathe and who you see as an inferior. So if I was you. I'll be careful how you address me. Because I won't be mean to you, but I'm going to put you in your place, bum. Who the hell you think you're talking to? I'm not your slave. And you have not proven to me that you're a friend of mine. I don't have to listen to what you're talking about. Going to the next.
uh, again, my question is, why is this white guy in our business? Why is he in our business? Again, the fear. What is y'all Negroes doing? Because they don't want, they don't want the one who they turn their nose up at to rise to the top. Because they fear you would do the same thing to them what they have done to us. That's the bottom line. This cat goes on to say that if you listen to Brother Talik, then you won't find no solution to, to women having babies out of wedlock to the gang problem, et cetera, et cetera. Y'all understand the problems that we have in the black community. The reality is temple and y'all know, I do not advocate out of wedlock babies. I advocate marriage. I advocate those things of which in the religious definition we call morality. Because that which is what you call moral is good for us, regardless if it has a connection to religion. Because it's a benefit. I don't advocate us to be drug dealers and drug addicts and all those different things. He gives an example of a brother some of y'all may know him, Jeffrey Canada. And Jeffrey Canada, I believe, is this black teacher who has be, who has gone beyond the call of duty and has caused many black youth who would otherwise get caught up in a school system that don't give a damn about them. Caught, he embraced them and gave them, them the inspiration to want to better their lives. And that's wonderful. But you see, he uses Jeffrey Canada as an example because Jeffrey Canada is a non-threat. Because Jeffrey Canada is going to take our black children, inspire them to do better, and there's nothing wrong with inspiring black children to Seek higher learning, education, and becoming a better person in general. There's nothing wrong with that. But he points out Jeffrey Canada because these children are going to do better so they can give that talent not to the black community, so they can give that talent back to the white man. So Jeffrey Canada does a good work helping our babies to do better. But at the same time, the end result is I'm going to do better so I can beg the white man for a job so I see I'm going to be successful so I can, so I can continue to make white folks life rich. So Jeffrey Canada is not a threat to white privilege and that's what this white guy is about. He is afraid of losing his white privilege. That's the bottom line. That's why you like President Obama, because Obama don't do anything for the black community, except he's the first black president. He's a black president that don't do nothing for black people. But what Obama does is he's trying to clean up white folks' mess. Not to benefit black, because we've been in a mess for a long time to clean up the white folks mess to benefit them. Jeffrey Canada is indeed inspiring and encouraging our babies to do better, not to benefit the black community, us overall, but to continue to clean up the white man's mess because if our babies, if our children is in the white man's educational system, then why must Jeffrey Canada Go behind what the white man created. Cleaning up things.
their mess because they know the education that our children that's coming from Caucasian, these Caucasians in government, they know that this education is not programming our children to want to do better because it does not teach black children self-love, independence from their oppressor, giving them encouragement to want to do something to produce for their own, for themselves. This public education that our babies get, our children look at it. The only thing they get taught about is what white folks did. The white man, George Washington did this, Ben Franklin, and the white man. And then for 30 days out of the whole year, they get the, they get taught the accomplishments of a slave. They are not taught that they are also from great people that created sciences and created the mathematics. And they are, and everybody else, based all their knowledge and wisdom on what their forefathers created. They're not taught that. So since they are not inspired, they are not taught that they have also given great things. They come from people that have given great things on the world. Then they get frustrated in public school. Because that public school, that education in the public school. If it is not, if it is not, uh, does not have a parent that's able to teach our babies the knowledge of themselves and give them inspiration and encouragement, if they don't have parents like that, then these babies go to hell. Least to say, your media, and your media even affects white children. They don't want to go to school like they used to. White children are becoming drug addicts. They are becoming alcoholics more and more. They are falling apart. You should be happy that there's a change of the guard. Don't you see? But I just don't want it to be y'all. Let it be Chinese people. Let it be Native American. Anybody. Please don't let it be the Negroes. That's what it's all about. Because the black man and woman in America are the most laughed at clown. We're seen as nothing but entertainers. Shake your shake our booty in front of you. Rap music. Sing songs. Entertainers. Make you laugh and give them. That's all we we're not looked upon as a serious people. But times is a changing. Because when you look at this black man, you don't see nothing funny. Nothing funny at all. You see him as a threat. Because if this voice affects the rest, your days is numbered, and you know that, and that's why you fear. You have white people like this guy going to try to tell me that I hate and all like that. Well, it's, what, what really, what are you about? But buddy, face this dude, because I know you have the money. You can make a video. Make a video response, because you know who I'm talking to. Come out the shadow with your coward ass. Uh, these folks, that face has always got a lot to say. Bring your ass out in the open, so we can see what you what you really about. But you're cowardly, so I don't even expect. But let me show you how fake you are, Mr. Faceless Coward White Guy. What black organization do you belong to? There are many black organizations out there that you like. I'm very sure, because they're not racist like me. Which one do you belong to? When was the last time you gave them a donation? How do you support them financially? I don't expect you to support me because I'm racist. You don't belong to none, do you? I already know you don't belong to no black organization. You just run in your mouth. Whoa! What have you done for black folk? Now, you, you want to complain about me? Now, I would not exist. Black people are 13% of the population. 
But when you look at TV, radio, government, the educational system, all the systems of this country, do you see black people represented 13%? At least that's the minimum you can do. Do you see 13%, Mr. White guy? No, you don't. So how many letters have you written to the government? Have you written to NBC, ABC, magazines to complain? Where the, where the black people at? Do you complain that black people, 13% of the population, but we over 13% in prison, mental institution, jail, unemployment line, anything that's bad in America, we have more than our percent. But anything of good, benefit, you don't see us. You don't see us represented. You don't complain about that, do you, white guy? But you're going to call me ignorant. No, you know I'm far from ignorant. And all those black people, under the sound of my voice, no, I'm not ignorant. We are here to teach and learn one another so we don't be ignorant, so we're not tricked by white folks like you who smile on our face and you really stab us in the back because you really don't want no true friendship with us. You just want to protect your white privilege because you know that once black folks start coming up out of the mud, out of this grave, your days of being better is numbered. <laughs> you say that the Ku Klux Klan, I'm so pitiful, and what I'm talking about is outdated. Even the Ku Klux, even the Ku Klux Klan is not interested in what I have to say. You want to know something? I have no problem with the Ku Klux Klan because I can sit down with somebody in the Ku Klux Klan or Nazi party or all any of these other races that hate black folks, I can sit with them and we can talk honestly, one on one, imano imano, and just be honest and work some stuff out. But you, you are the one that's really the problem because you're slick. You are covert, undercover racist. You might know, but then you might not know. You might honestly believe, I really like black guys. But really you don't. You don't want a black man. You really don't want to obey laws created by black people. You don't want to see a bunch of black faces on your TV when you cut on TV. Nothing. Now YouTube is different. So you don't have to watch me. But on general TV, you don't want to turn on your TV and every time you there's a black face. But you think black folks is supposed to be happy every time we turn on our TV. White guy, white white woman, white child, white dog, white, 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 white. You think we're supposed to be happy with that. You don't see no problem with it. See how fake you are? At least if you want to be fair, give us the minimum since black people represent 13% of the population, the minimum you could do is we show, make sure that we are represented in all the systems of America, at least our little 13%. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to give us nothing. And that will no longer be tolerated. Not here. These children, these black babies deserve better than what was done to me and our ancestors. They should be given their minimum of 13% or they should seek to separate from evil and wicked, greedy, selfish bastards like those who control the system and the governments that we call America. It's simple as that. They don't, we, we have died for this country. We have paid our taxes. We deserve just as much as anybody else. These babies, our babies deserve better. And we should strive and want better for them. And stop being a coward. Because some white guy talking about you are a racist. The racist, you're looking at the racist. The white man is the racist. If there's black racism, it came from white folks. That's who started it. Who you think you're talking to? You can't trick nobody no more. I'm going to say this and I 
Hope I have not been boring you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this to conclusion. This faceless white guy who I view, since you can call me name, I'm going to call you a name, and I view you as an undercover racist. The real one. Because all the systems, so should you choose, benefit, and you have an advantage. Because all the systems benefit your Caucasian scheme. So you can be a racist against me. Bringing this to conclusion, I want to say this. This faceless guy says that my opinion is outdated. It's old and outdated. I don't have a clue. Well, actually, sir, that's the reason why I exist, because of the clue. And usually when you think about a clue, a very much known reference to clues is detectives use clues in order to solve a crime because a crime has been committed. The world's greatest crime that has ever happened in humanity was the crime of the United States of America taking these Africans, making them slaves for over 300 years, robbing us of our religion, our God, everything, and you turned us from a strong African people into a dark version of you. At first, we were just outright slaves, and then later on, we became African European. We were told we come from Africa, but the only life we know was that which was presented to us by our slave master. So whatever we are, white guy, your ancestors, your, your people caused this. Whatever I am, your people caused me to come into existence, not me. If there's black racism, your people kicked it off. You are at the root. You started it. You created this monster. So don't get angry at me. And I'm outdated and, up, and up, get upset with me. Get upset with those who caused the problem to begin with. I'm just a consequence. I'm just the result. You free black people, so you say. You claim. We've never really been free. The black man and woman was free. But prior to being free, what was these ex-slaves? What were we? We were slaves. How long were you slave? For 300 years. How long have you been free? No, you have no experience. Black people have no experience being free. Let me talk to y'all Negroes a second. Just because your face is on YouTube, don't make you free. Just because you got a $100,000 house, don't make you free. Just because you got a, a car, fancy rims, just because you can smoke crack, that don't make you free. The white man, these racist Caucasians, free black people, but did not teach you what freedom was. Uh, I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna say that again. You're going to set people free, but don't teach them what freedom is. You know what it is. You fought for it in the Revolutionary War. Y'all know what freedom is, but you don't teach the slave what freedom is because you, cause you really didn't set the slave free. You just put him into a different condition of what slavery was. Many of the slaves had to go back to the plantation where they supposed to be getting free from? How is the black man and woman free? 
We still have your European name. We still pray to the God that you gave us. We're nothing but black versions of you. So how are we free? Oh, because so and so got a hundred million dollar contract. You gave Shaq a hundred million dollar contract. How much money do you make? If you can give Shaq a hundred million dollars, how much money is the white man, these Caucasian Jews that run the media sports and all, how much are y'all making? Cause, and the reason why you can do that, cause you know that the black man in America will not free. We have no idea what freedom is. Nothing but voluntary millionaire slaves, some of us. Or we're voluntary poor slaves like me. <laughs> In conclusion, why do you why do you support T Mai? You support T Mai. Because he's a good brother. But t concentrates on the detriment of the black community. t concentrates on the symptom. But he ignores the cause of the disease. You cannot cure a disease unless you know the cause, the root of it. And see, the root cause. See, in order to deal with a, a disease, you have to deal with the root. If you ignore the root, you'll never, you'll never cure the disease. So, Brother t with all due respect, can make all the videos he wants to. Because the people don't even know why they're sick. And the reason why they don't know they're sick is because you won't tell them the root cause. And the root cause is our condition with white folks, racist, Caucasian people have done to us. You should not feel no shame in saying it was the racist white people. And get our people to understand what happened to them. When you're treating somebody for diabetes, you got to tell them how, why it came into being. So they know how to control it. So they know how to maintain it. So they know how to live with the disease. Maybe they can become cured. But if you ignore the cause of it, then you guaranteeing that person to die. You cannot cure a disease by covering up the symptom. So what if you can get black people oh, to stop killing one another, stop having it out of wedlock babies, and that's nice and that's beautiful. But you making them free and getting them to do better so they can benefit their oppressors who still there, who they still gonna pay taxes to, who they still gonna send their babies to the army, and their babies go to Afghanistan or Iraq to fight for these white folks oil or diamonds or whatever their uh, uh, per, their agenda is that they never tell us about. I want I the reality here is I want us to be free. I don't want the white man's religion. I don't want his name. I don't want his water. I don't want nothing. I want us free. He should be looking up to us just like we have been looking up to him. And that, and that would happen if we was free. But since we're not free, then this bum, this faceless bum, got the nerve to come to me and tell me somebody ignorant. Now the ones who are ignorant are the ones who listen to your lies. Black people have been listening to white folks for 300 some years. What has it gotten us? Nothing. 
But you always come out the woodwork because you don't want black folks to get upset because you know they get upset. They might change things and see you like it just the way it is. White privilege. You being on top. Those days are over. Those days are over. You want to solve the problems in the black community, then you got to tell them why they are sick. And the root of it is Caucasian, racist Caucasian people in power who created the, these systems of education, government, these systems of white supremacy. If you're not talking about white folks, you can't help black people because that's the root. I did not say concentrate on it. I did not say, I did not say cry over spilled milk, but we need to know what happened to us so we can go on to better things. Get that out your system. All right. Now, once that's out your system, now we can roll. Okay. Now we understand what happened to us. Now, what do we do to cure the disease? Not cover up the symptom because now, brother, he got a fancy car to drive because when it's all said and done, you've only become a voluntary, more complex slave. Because if you was a man, if you was a woman, we as a people, we should want a nation we can call our own, just like these people do. And we want to show our greatness, not do something and all the credit goes to our oppressor. Everything that Michael Jordan has done, he's an American. And when you think about America, you think about white people. You don't think about black folk. Oprah Winfrey, all her credit, whatever she is, her accomplishment, she's an American. When you think of America, you think about white folks. I want to put us in a position, when you think about us, you see us, not our oppressor. We want the credit for a damn change. You get the credit. You even steal credit. Talk about maybe white folks built the pyramids. Maybe white folks created science and mathematics. You damn liar. So if you want credit for doing things, what's wrong with us as a people wanting credit to do things? But y'all think because you really don't want equality. You want a pet monkey. Well, I don't want no more bananas from your ass. Roll out. I'm not your slave. And that's the bottom line. I'm free. I might not be free here in America physically, but right here, you don't have me no more. So I don't need your support. James Michael Smith, or whatever you want to call yourself, you can give your, your support to some black guy who, who is still dead in the head, who has fallen for your trickery. But it ain't happening here. Thank you for listening. Woo, that was a lot, nice long talk. But I hope that it wasn't boring. I hope that we, I hope that we, uh, my Caucasian viewers and Caucasian people who watch this video, this is not about hatred, dislike. We're putting it all out on the table, open and honest. If you don't want to be our friend, just say so. Don't be smiling in people's face and stabbing them in the back and whatever. You know, come on. But if we really want to make this work, then let's do this. Because it's a benefit from everybody that we view ourselves as human beings, not as black, white, red, yellow. As human beings. Respect this earth. Respect the animals. And we'll be on our way. To something so glorified. Oh man. You can't even imagine. We won't be able to see it. But we can begin the process. So our babies. Can bring into reality. The heaven and the hereafter. Spoken about in the Quran and the Bible. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tali Keep it right. Let's talk about it. Jot down your comment. This was. And is. Y'all. the Oh man. Whatever you do. Think for yourself. This was the Reality's Temple on Earth. Till next time. Woo, this was a long one. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Alrighty then.
hold on, I thought I was done, but I looked at my notes, wasn't quite finished, not quite finished, so just please bear with me just a few 15 minutes more, <laughs> and let's get this job 100% done. Now, I said that black people, the so-called Negro, we who are the descendants of slaves in America, our people were set free, having no knowledge of what freedom is. So to solve this problem, you must deal with the root. You must deal with the cause. And the cause is over 300 years of slavery. To give you an example, very simple. You're crossing the street and a car hits you. You have the right of way. Everything is on your side. The driver is at fault. Now you go to the hospital. You are paralyzed from being hit by the car. So you begin treatment. What is the treatment that is beginning? It's called rehabilitation. Why do you need rehabilitation? Because something has become injured and it must be rehabilitated in order to try to get it to heal so it can function like it once was. Do you understand? So, Slavery is an injury to a people. This injury lasting over 300 years. Not 30 days, not 30 years, generation after generation. Then the mentality of slavery goes on and on and on till 2010. We need rehabilitation. And it does not happen overnight. You, we came from a slave process of over 300 years. But all of a sudden, the white man free us. Then all of a sudden, y'all will. How are you well coming out of 300 years? 300 years of slavery. You tell me. And see, y'all just some silly ass people. If somebody get hit by a car, then three days later, you expect them to walk. That's, that's y'all silly thinking. This happened over 300 years. The mentality is still there. You don't have the chain. White racism is still here. It has not gone anywhere. So the injury cannot even heal because white supremacy is still here. The slave mentality is still here. There has been no rehabilitation. It takes a long time. Some people who go through rehabilitation, some of them will heal and can walk again. There is no time. You can't say, oh, after three months, you can walk again. That's not how it works. Y'all need to really stop being stupid and silly, and y'all must really think, I'm a damn fool. When people get injured, everybody heals different. I could get hit by a car, but we don't know what the injury is. We don't know how severe the injury is. So if black people still have a problem, we have we don't act like free people, clearly we are still injured. We need white people to walk with. We need we use them as a crutch. We are unable to function on our own because we are still injured and we have not been given rehabilitation. That's the purpose of why I'm here. That's the purpose of Sarah Sudan Seti. That's the purpose of the Hebrew Israelites. That's the purpose to bring us, bring us rehabilitation. We're not getting it from the oppressor. The white man is not rehabilitating us. We are re rehabbing ourselves. Now what white people do is they interfere and get in the damn way 
and because they don't they get tired of folks talking about them they try to interfere and, and they and also as long as we are injured there's a benefit there's a benefit to us being injured. Now, we are an injured people. We were free over a hundred some years ago, but still have a slave mentality. We don't act like free people. We don't talk. We don't walk. We don't even think about independence. We want to hold on to the massa as long as possible. That's a still a slave mentality. I don't care how many, I don't care how many cars you got. I don't care what kind of education. With all that education, with all the cars, why you still want to hold on to Massa? You don't want nothing of your own because you have not been rehabilitated. You're still a slave. You're a white man with black skin. So I am here, and many of others of us are here because of rehabilitation. You must understand what happened to you. You must understand that you got hit by this car. You are not unconscious. And now you must be, you must go through the process of rehabilitation. Now, who is to pay for the injury? Most times, the one who hit the person with the car, they are the one responsible for paying for the injury. Anybody out there that, that has been hit by a car, you know by law, according to the law that the white man designed, if you get anybody that caused injury, you have to pay for the, in, for the injury that you caused. But when it comes to slavery, <laughs> when it comes to slavery, don't bring up my name. I didn't do nothing. The government as individuals, that's not your problem. But as the government of America that legalized slavery, that caused the injury because you made it legal for over 300 years, then the government of America, if it had any kind of character, any kind of morality, any kind of ethics, it knows it has the responsibility of rehabilitation and if, it, if, and if the government refused to rehab the people who it has injured for over 300 years, then it should pay or help and aid those who are rehabbing the people. But see, you don't want to rehab the people. You want to keep us as a voluntary slave. Give us some trinkets. Give us a basketball contract. Give us a, a recording contract. Allow a few of us to make a little money allow a few of us to be so-called successful, to give the illusion of progress, to give the illusion that everything is all right, but we are still injured. And see, your problem, Michael James Smith or whatever, I think that's whatever he faced his ass, I don't know what he called himself, you just get sick of black folks talking about what white folks did and what white folks did. If the white man, if this racist Caucasian, if these white folks in America who control everything, if you did your duty and accepted your responsibility to rehab the people who you made slaves, I wouldn't be saying anything right now. Because now, once a person get hit by a car, the insurance company pays for the treatment, the burden falls on that person, to attempt to be healed. Now, you can't control your body. Your body may never walk again. But at least the person that hit you with the car has paid your medical bills and did what is necessary to attempt to put you where you were to make you whole again so that you can walk. That's the responsibility of those who cause injury. But see, you don't want to accept your risk. And now, you've let so much time go by and you allow this condition to go on for so long, the bill 
for treating such injury is astronomical. And y'all get so upset. Oh, why the white man? No, it's the government. Has nothing to do with you. But at the same time, you want to complain about healing this injury to black folks. But when the government start war in Iraq, you don't want that. But they did it anyway. How much is it causing you? To attempt to heal what has happened to black folk, to show you how good hearted we are, it don't even take as much as you paid for the Iraq war, as you paid for Afghanistan or Vietnam or World War II or whatever. But see, you really like to see black folks in a slave position. See, because you have been conditioned to think that way yourself. You don't want to see black folks on equal footing with you. That's the bottom line. So you like Brother t because he'll never tell you white folks this, white folks that. And ignore the cause of the disease. He want to tell you that he got hit by a car, but you don't have to have no responsibility. It's up to him. Well, if that's how he feels, that's on him. That's on him. But here, you are the driver of the car. You're responsible for my damn injury. That's the bottom line. And I will tell you and will remind you so when you bring that fake ass smiling like everything, no, no, dude. It ain't no smile. It ain't no... You hit me with a car, remember? Yeah, I'm walking. Not because you helped me. I'm going to remind you your ass hit me with a car. These black people going to remind the United States government that they ran us over with a car. And I'm not going to get over it. Do you get over 9-11? Do the Jewish people get over the Holocaust? Do you get over any of your atrocities? No, you don't. So don't ask me to get over my injury. And you caused it. And by your law, you should pay. Your law. You created this injury. But that shows you how you don't respect black folks. That shows you how you're a liar. That shows you how you're a hypocrite. You don't have no desire. You don't really give a damn about us. And I'm not going to accept it. He can accept that. I never. I will encourage our people to do for themselves and do the best that you can. But we're not going to let you off the damn hook. You owe for this bill. 300 year, 400 year old bill. Don't come smile in my face with that garbage. I'm not your slave. I'm not a fool. That's why. That's why you don't like Angel Snuff Number 7. That's why you don't like a lot of other black people. Because you cause injury and you don't want to be reminded. Because you enjoying yourself. Because it'll take out of your pocket. And my friendship is not worth you losing a little dollars and cents. Because that's what it's all about. Well, greed being better than somebody else. So you can get the hell out of my face. I don't need your greedy ass support. I don't need your selfish ass on my page. Roll out. That's the bottom line here. Rehabilitation. And then you want to get in our business when we're trying to rehabil rehabilitate our people ourselves. You don't want to pay the bill and you want us not to get involved and help each other understand what happened to us. Because you don't want us as a people to look at you like the trash that you really are. Because a person with good traits and character pay their bills. They'll pay for the injury they caused. But you won't. Because you all thing you want to do is protect, have an advantage, white privilege. That's the bottom line. <laughs> we really need to get to separate away from you. That's what we really need to do. That's it, y'all. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Tony, keeping it raw. Bringing it raw. This was. Think for yourselves, people. This was. That is. The reality is temple on earth. Man, this is a this was a long, long time. Hope it's worth.